my brothers and sisters and siblings for those who do not identify as either. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Well, it's actually afternoon right now. Sorry, I know, I know. I've been slacking. Again, we keep doing these recording the podcast the day of the upload. You know what? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Sometimes I wish that I was in a different time zone that was like a little bit behind where most of you are. So that by the time that I uploaded this, it wouldn't be that late for you because especially you East Coasters, by the time that this is uploaded, it's already like the day's over. Um, And whose fault is that? Mine. No, I have no one else to blame. But anyway, hi, welcome back to another episode of Vacancy at Vanilla's with me, your host Vanilla. Hi, how are you? How's your week been? I hope it's been good. Um, Still in a weird state. Um with the whole, you know, the country and everything. And I am in a weird, like, state in my life right now. Um, I actually heard the phrase, I think it's called the luteal phase. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if I'm mistaking that for something else. Let me Google it before I just keep blabbing on about this. But I went to, a few weeks ago, you guys heard me talk about how I went to a 222 event which is, it's this thing where you get to meet people that you don't know, whatever. Um, And one of the girls there, let me see, luteal phase, Uh, pregnancy, menstrual cycle. Oh, okay. This is not at all what I'm thinking of. (laughs) Is the phase of your menstrual cycle right after ovulation? Girl, what the hell am I thinking of? (laughs) Okay. Girl, I am talking about something completely different. I don't know what the fuck gonna think. I don't know what she was talking about. Basically, she was talking about, I think because I just keep seeing luteal phase stuff on TikTok, and I thought that this was the same thing that she was talking about. If somebody knows the actual term that I'm talking about, please let me know. So basically, there's this pivotal point in your life that has to do with like astrology that is from the time that you turn 28 to 30. From from age 28 to 30 is this. I don't know the the term, but this like whatever period in your life um, that's supposed to be very challenging, very transformational. Okay, right. And like everyone has one or something. So uh, she had, you know, talked about that at the little uh, brunch that we were at. And I was like, damn, it's only my third day out here, bro. I just turned 28. Fuck. I don't want to go through. Please, please, Lord. When do the challenges end? Please, please, please. I'm not your fucking strongest soldier. I cannot do this anymore. No, I'm just kidding. But. I'm just like, bruh, come on, why can't we just fucking chill and vibe? Why do I have to, like, why does everything have to be a lesson learned, you know? Everything's got to be a fucking lesson learned, you know? And it's funny because it's like, okay, I'm learning all these lessons, but when do I get to implement it? (laughs) When do I get to use the knowledge that I have learned from all of these misfortunes of mine? So that's what I'm fucking wondering. (laughs) But I know that soon the time will come. And uh, that's kind of how my life has been feeling the past few weeks. It's been... uh, A lot of random abrupt changes. Um, A lot of people that I thought that I'd be locked in with are like off the face of the earth now. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I don't know. Um, It's just a weird, it's like anyone can get it. Anyone can get it right now. Like I'm very on edge. I'm very tense. Um, Anyone can get it. Anyone can run this fade with me right now. I'm very irritated, (laughs) very irritated. So please do not push my buttons because... Right. Okay. That's what I thought. (laughs) Me not knowing how to fight. That's also another delusion of mine is that I know, even though I've never been in like a real fight, I did have to like jump in to save my friend one time. I've told that story on like way episodes ago. Um, But I do have this theory that I can fight like fucking Mike Tyson for some reason. I don't know why, but I I do have this theory that in my head, like if you got me angry to the point, like I, I would see red and it would be a bloodbath. Like I just, I really genuinely think that if I, if it got to the point where I had to fist fight somebody, you're going to have to pry me off of them. That's like, it's, it's just, there's no in between. You know what I mean? It's either like we're chilling or you get me to that point. And I've never gotten to that point, but I feel like deep down, I don't know. I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm a little scared. Is that, is that real? Or should I talk to somebody about that? Do you guys feel the same way? Or is that something that I should be speaking to a licensed professional about? I'm not sure. I just, I, I just feel that. I just feel that. And sometimes I'm like, 
and, and perfect example, perfect example. The time when um, I went to go see The Substance and we were walking out of the movies and the girl in front of us, I told this story maybe like four episodes ago. The girl in front of us turned around and was like, do you have to share your opinion every time that you leave the movies? I'm not even kidding. There was a moment in time where, where like life, I just didn't even feel like this was, this was real life. I'm like, she can't, this is not even real. Like you can't, you, oh, you want to talk about mothers. You want to talk about mother. That's like how I, <laughs> my, I was like, really? Like this is not even real life right now. Like I know she did not just turn it, like it almost was like laughable. And in that moment, my mind just went blank. And I was like, bitch, you could like, let's fucking, we, we could fight right now. Like if that's really what you want to do. But I'm trying to be the bigger person. I'm trying to be the bigger person. And I'm not an angry person at all. I'm, I'm actually the kind of person like who will go like fucking cry in a corner. I'm not a very angry person. I don't really get angry. I get sad more often um, than angry. So but but this past week, man, I just am frustrated with a lot of people in my life. Um, I'm angry at not really at myself, but I feel like I'm kind of like somehow doing the, the the thing where I like blame myself for for everything where I'm just like, oh, I'm just the girl that is cool and everyone likes to, to kiki with, but no one actually wants to like you know, really love me for me. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh my God. With the dramatics. Like you're so annoying. Like, I know that I'm doing it like in a dramatic way. And I feel like sometimes <clears throat> I do this purposely where I will like purposely want to listen to sad music and purposely like, I want to be like, <sighs> Like, why do I do it to myself? Like, like, I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like, I want to feel the sadness. I want to feel what? Like, why? I don't know. Maybe because I'm like, I don't want to like run from any emotions, but I will like purposely put on like really sad playlists and just be like, ah. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know. I, I am um a big believer in like, f you need to feel what you feel because I don't like to feel like I'm bottling stuff up. That's the one thing that I cannot deal with that. Like I, I will lay everything out on the fucking table. I will lay everything out on the table. And maybe that's why, um, I will never be able to have allegations of being mysterious and nonchalant as much as I would like to be like that m mysterious nonchalant bitch. It, ah, I'm really not. I'm really not. I really will be like, okay, so what, what are we doing? Like what, let's lay it all on the table right here. Um, and that's really, you know, as far as like people that I'm actually involved with, if, if I don't really like, then, you know, I could give two fucks. Like when it comes to like the opinion of like someone I don't know or care about, like legit, legitimately could care less. But then when it comes to the people that are actually a part of my life and that I cherish, then it's like, okay, now you're on this pedestal. Now I put you on this pedestal because there's not a lot of people that I give enough of a fuck about. So now you're, you're on this pedestal with these people that I care about. You know what I mean? So... <clears throat> Uh, it's just, it fucking sucks. It fucking sucks being let down that by people that you freaking love. Um, and yeah, I don't know, but what the hell else are we talking about? Girl, again, I'm, I'm over here talking about luteal phase. I don't even know what the fuck that actually means. Let's actually, okay, let's, let's see like what luteal phase actually is. Like what happens during the luteal phase. During the luteal phase, opt for exercises like yoga, walking, or low-intensity strength training to accom accommodate potential energy fluctuations. Listen to your body. Okay, so okay, so when is it technically? Right after ovulation. It lasts for about 14 days. Okay, great. So so then so I don't get a fucking break. So I bleed out of my fucking pussy and then I fucking ovulate. And then after I, I go through the luteal phase where I'm also like tired and shit. And then I got to do it all over again. <sighs> I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, and I have a copper IUD. So I get my period every month. Yippee. Because I was afraid of um, getting the hormonal IUD because I was afraid of gaining weight. And then guess what, bitch? I gained weight regardless. <laughs> so who's the, who's the joke on now? Who's the joke on now? <laughs> who's freaking laughing now? So it really doesn't even matter. Maybe I should have just did it. But 
Um, that's another thing too. I want to lose weight so bad, but I, I, I think about it every single day. Don't have any motivation to do it though. Like, what's that about? Why is this something that is on my mind 24 seven? But then when it actually comes to like the, and no, don't get me wrong. Like I, I eat decent. I eat decent every now and then maybe a Chick-fil-A spicy deluxe sandwich ends up in my hand somehow. I don't know. But for the most part, I do eat pretty good, but I am not somebody who can go hours, days without eating. Like when I eat, I need to eat meals. Like I need to eat hearty fucking meals. So that's my thing is I feel like I'm just a hungry fucking person. Like I just want to eat. Um, eat, 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 hungry. Yeah. Like I just want to fucking eat all the time. Hi, Miso. He's down here. I'm making sure he's not biting the wire. Okay. You're sniffing it. Don't, don't do that. Um, Got to keep an eye on my son over here. Hey, you want to come sit up here with mommy so I don't have to worry about you biting the wire? Here, come sit up here. There you go. Uh, it's, yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm just freaking hungry all the time. Just want to eat, 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 eat. Because I'm an eater. Because I'm an eater. Okay, relax. Relax, pause. I'm not. Well, given the opportunity. <laughs> um, yeah, so I am just a very hungry person and I want to eat all the time. So when it comes to like, if I had to meal prep and I had to eat chicken and rice and fucking broccoli every day, like that, that just takes away all of the joy that I have in my life. Like food is a big part of the joy that I feel. And so it's like, okay, so now you want to, you want to rip that from my grasp too? Like I can't have anything in this freaking universe. So that's where it's hard for me. It's more about the food. And I do like going on walks. I like hiking. I like going to the gym. I like doing yoga classes. I like doing, I like, I've been doing a lot of Pilates and bar classes. I've been doing a lot of like the girly workout classes and it's fun. It's fun. And I do feel like I see a little bit of a difference in my body. The weight on the scale is going up. So that's what I'm a little confused about, but I'm just trying to tell myself, oh, muscle weighs more than fat, muscle weight, because I have been doing classes that involve like muscle stuff. So I'm like, <laughs> so fucking let's just hope that I'm just not getting bigger backed as we speak and that it's just muscle developing. I don't know. Can you see my son sitting on my lap right now? He's actually being very, very sweet. My little guy. I just love this freaking guy. I just love this guy so much, even though he's bad. I wouldn't trade him for the world right? My little bad guy. He's so cute. Um, I'm going to Joshua Tree this weekend. Possibly. It's not 100%. I'm still actually waiting for that confirmation text today. Um, I'm going to go to Joshua Tree, if I do go, with uh, Dylan and his girlfriend, and then maybe their other friend might come along. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited. If we do go, I'm very excited. It's like the only thing I'm looking forward to. So hopefully we go because <laughs> I love Joshua Tree. It's just, it's a nice little like <sighs> like a breath of fresh air, a nice little escape. It's the perfect little weekend thing. It's the perfect thing to do just for like two days and then like come back to LA. And it's only like a two hour drive. It's not bad. So it's, if you don't know what Joshua Tree is, it's just like a desert basically. And they have like really nice Airbnbs with like little hot tubs and they're just like super secluded. And it's just a nice place to go with like a friend or multiple friends or a fucking lover or something it's just a cute place to just go and fucking unwind for a little bit um and I've kind of been needing that I've been needing a break a reset um and I think everyone needs and deserves a fucking reset I've been a slave to my fucking phone I don't know what it is but recently I've just been like obsessed with TikTok like not obsessed but just can't look away from the screen like um I feel like I haven't had no I have I definitely have stuff to do but I feel like I well, like, like, okay, I wake up in the morning and I sit and fucking scroll on TikTok for an hour. Like, why am I doing that? Like, get up, start your day. Like, that shit pisses me off. And it's like this endless cycle where I'm like, I don't want to do it, but I do it anyway. Like, what the hell is that about? Um, so that's, I just don't really like that. So I just need to kind of like fucking unplug. And if I go, I am going to vlog. But other than that, I'm not going to be like sitting and fucking scrolling on my phone. Miso has an eye booger and I literally cannot get it. I've just been picking at it. Okay, got it. Got it. Um, it's just one of those things like I don't want to be fucking sitting and scrolling like I want to be like present and talking to my friends and interacting with human beings oh my god like I just feel like I just yearn for fucking human interaction um so I'm really hoping that that it all works out and that we can go um and it'll be a nice funky little vlog for you guys to watch and it'll be a good time it'll be a good time I get to fucking relax for a weekend and just do fuck all maybe go thrifting We'll cook food at the Airbnb. It'll be cute. So I'm excited if we do go. And um, 
I was debating on because I didn't even know that, that they had wanted to go to Joshua Tree because I was going to go by myself. Literally last weekend, I was like laying in bed looking at Airbnbs. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go by myself because I did that two years ago. And it was like not this past January, but the one before. And it was so nice. I had such a good time. I just fucking literally just went for two days and just fucking chilled out. Like it was so nice. Um just a little bit of a self-care thing, you know? I think everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves that, right, Miso? Doesn't everyone deserve that? But I miss my kids when I go away from them. Like, I've never been away from them for longer than, like, two days. <sighs> but I obviously have somebody, like, hang out with them and watch them um, and feed them and stuff. But I'd be missing my kids. I'd be like, oh, my God, do they think I'm never going to come back? No, I will. I promise, Miso. I promise. I can't believe he's sitting with me like this. Usually he doesn't, like, actually sit with me like this. This is very sweet. Um... But yeah, no, I definitely think that season seasonal depression has kind of been beating my ass lately. And I'm not somebody, like I said, I'm not somebody who typically gets depressed. I usually am pretty glaff, gl glaff, glaff half full. <laughs> glaff half full, guys. Make sure that your glaff is half full. Are you kidding? I'm a glass half full <laughs> person, usually. Um... When it comes to like just life and being optimistic and stuff. When it comes to like anxiety and stuff, then sometimes I'm the glass, what is it, glass half empty kind of person where I like get in my, I'm like, oh. But for the most part, when it comes to like if people are having like challenges or if I'm having a challenge, I'm always like, this is just, this is part of the story. This is, it's pivotal for your growth. Like, or, or you know, it's necessary, guys. Come on, like stick with me. <laughs> Usually I am that kind of person. Um, and I do, I do, I do a hundred percent trust and believe that everything does happen for a reason, whether it's like fucked or horrible and bad. Um that it really all has something to do with your life and where it's going to place you and the things that you're going to go through and everything happens at that time for a reason for your greater good um in the future as long as you you know are a good person yourself and you're doing good is like i mean if you're if you're if you're out here being the fucking killer then yeah obviously maybe shit is not going to work out in your favor but if you have a good heart and, and good intentions and you know what i mean shit's going to work out in your favor whether you like it or not so trust and believe that okay trust and believe that it's going to work out in your favor um and, you know, it has to do with, like, a lot of the things that I went through younger, like, when I ha had a bunch of shitty relationships when I was younger. Um, and, like, I I've told this, you know, I've said this a million times, but I used to be kind of a pushover. Um, and I feel like, you know, being in those relationships when I was younger and also being in the industry that I was in, the, the dancing industry and, and the club industry, has really... Um, like molded me as a person in a way that I am so forever grateful for and so appreciative of that I don't let people men especially like walk all over me um because I just was kind of a pushover I just was kind of a pushover and I would literally just let anything ha like I just wouldn't I, I didn't know how to say no to like anything um <clears throat> and I feel like growing up like I don't know n not that I like wasn't taught that but I just feel like I don't know like no one ever was like if a man is like you, you could like say no like fucking speak up for yourself like no one ever really told me that like because it just like wasn't anything that was like a topic of conversation I guess so I just always felt like I had to like people please for fucking everyone like and men especially too because when you're like a younger woman it's like you want that fucking validation or whatever and dude, it was just, oh my God, I was just literally like uh, these, these guys were just like fucking walking all over me, these exes of mine, some of them. Um, and it was horrible. It was fucking awful. And I would just be like, okay, it's fine, I guess. Yeah. You're sorry. Okay. <laughs> like, and I see a lot of, you know, a lot of these stories and calls that I get from you guys, um, explaining, you know, your relationship with people in your lives and stuff like that. I see a lot of my young self in a lot of you. Um, and you got to think of me in, in like, in like a cool, like, like literally like cool auntie to, to cool niece, nephew, like right now, you got to think about it. Like in, in a way for some of y'all, I am, I am auntie. Like I am, I am, <laughs> I'm unk for real. Like I am auntie to some of you because some of you are in your, Hey, me so stop that. 
he's trying to bite this freaking wire now. Um, some of you are, you know, in your early 20s. Some of y'all even aren't in your 20s yet, you know. Um, some of you are my age or older than me. Like, I have a just de demographic full of a whole bunch of different people, which I love. But um, I do, like, a lot of the calls that I get and a lot of the messages that I get from you guys are basically people being like, you've helped me so much and, you know, I've taken your advice with this and that. And it's just kind of like a lot of it's just me rambling and, and half the time I'm like, I feel like, you know, some of it is just like in one year out the other. But to know that some of the stuff that I say like sticks with you guys makes me very, very fucking happy and is like really cool. Um, and because I don't even like I'll literally be doing the podcast and like I'll edit it and I don't listen to it back. I just make sure that the audio is lined up and that's it, baby. I upload that shit like that's it. I don't ever listen to my podcast back. I probably like even after I record this, I'm like, what did I talk about? Like, I don't even be remembering what the fuck I talked about. <laughs> Don't even be remembering what I talked about, but, um, I don't even, hear, now that I'm thinking about it, what the hell was even the point? Like, where were we, where was the, what was the point of this, of me talking about, hey, why are you biting me? What was even the point of me talking about this to begin with? I don't even remember where was I going with this, but just don't be a pushover, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the whole freaking point of it was. I forgot where we started in this conversation. Um, I feel like it'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Hmm. hmm. Glass half full. Glass half full. <laughs> and then what was after that? Uh, eh, well, I don't know. Well, I hope what I said resonated with you, <laughs> even though I don't remember why I started talking about it. Uh, um, I really would like to dress cooler than I do. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Every now and then, I'll step. I'll I'll step out. I'll step out with that with that shit on. I'll put a little fit together, but. Sometimes I like see these videos and pictures of like cute mid-sized girlies wearing the cutest freaking outfits And then I'm like, bro, where the hell do y'all be getting this shit for real? Where do you be getting this shit? Like I want to dress cutesy ootsy ootsy, especially now that it's fall Like I want to be putting that shit on. I need a freaking stylist. I also need to purge my closet The thing is is that I have too much shit and it's funny because I have too much shit and, and too many clothes and, and no clothes at the exact same time. Does that make any fucking sense? I have too many clothes, but nothing at the exact, it's just a whole bunch of fucking nothing. Like, and I feel like I purge my clothes like multiple times a year. Miso, what are we doing now? Now we're biting my fucking acrylic nails off. Don't do that. Well, actually they're gel X baby. Don't get it twisted. Um, I think, look, I think, look, I pet him and then I stop and then he bites me. Look, let me stop. Let me see what he does. Is that his way of being like, girl, what the hell? What's wrong with you? Okay, now he's not. I don't even know if he's in the frame. He's on my lap, so I don't even know if you could see him. Okay. Oh, now he's just laying his little head down. Oh, my God, he's getting comfy. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, I need, I need to purge my closet. That's ex Literally, that's what I'm going to do. While the podcast is uploading, I'm going to be sitting on my fucking laptop, and I'm going to watch Martin and Homs's podcast, Out of Character. And if you like me, I think you would like them. Um, if you if you guys, they're my favorite YouTubers, slushy noobs. I fucking love them. They're very um, they're kind of the same way that I am. They're like serious but not serious, but like the way that they joke and say things. Um, and they're very silly and hilarious. So I definitely recommend them. I definitely recommend them. They're the only like men with a microphone that I'll listen to them and the basement yard. Um, as far as just two men with a microphone, that's, that's as far as you, you can get me to listen to. Um, but straight men, two straight men with a microphone at, at that. I'm like, Oh my God, that sounds like a nightmare, but though, th I love them. I love them down. So y'all, y'all gotta listen to them too. Whenever you're not listening to me. Um, Oh, text message, Rachel. Let me mute my. I want maybe me and Rachel will hang out later too. I haven't seen her in a while. We we both been going through it, and she was supposed to come do the podcast. Um, she wants to come on Twitch now. She wants to come for when I do the subathon. Um, yes, you heard it right. I'm doing a subathon on Twitch on my Kai Sanat shit. I actually had this plan before Kai Sanat was gonna do his, so don't think I'm copying him. But I'm not doing a fucking 30 day one, please. I'm gonna have to cap it at some point. But I am doing a subathon. If you don't know what that is, um, essentially it is a stream where I don't know how long I'll be live for. Um, every single sub that I get adds time onto a timer that I have to stay live for. So I basically want to have like a cool, um, itinerary of stuff going on for that, pretty much that whole day. And, uh, 
yeah, we'll see fucking how it goes. And it's so funny to me to think like, I'm like, what if I plan out this whole fucking shit? I plan out this whole day full of fun things. And then <laughs> I get like two subs and then it's over in like 10 minutes. I'm like, all right, guys, thank you so much for coming to my sub. <laughs> I'll be so fucking embarrassed. So um, I don't know when that's going to be. Uh, probably, probably early December, I'm thinking um or later this month it depends it depends on if i end up going back home for thanksgiving or not i'm still debating on if i'm gonna go back to connecticut for thanksgiving or if i'm gonna go for christmas it's still up in the air don't fucking know what the hell i'm gonna do yet so you know just debating and my son is still laying on me i'm very happy about this because this is not something that he usually does and I don't even know if I have the proof because I still don't know if he's in frame and it's kind of upsetting me. It's kind of upsetting me and my homegirls because if you can't go to Bella Noche, then where the hell can you go, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I'm going to purge my closet and I don't know, maybe I'll like just give Rachel first dibs on if she wants anything. Um, <clears throat> and then the rest I'll donate to Goodwill. And that's really it. Also, did you guys know that what's the whole tea with like if you donate close to Good Goodrill? Good grill? Good grill. Good. What if I opened up a place called Good Grill and it's a Goodwill and a barbecue spot combined? <laughs> it's a thrifting, thrifting and barbecue experience. Would you come? <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm just going to donate this stuff, but you can get a tax write off if you donate stuff at goodwill i don't know like how much it really matters um also speaking of tax write-offs your girl is a <laughs> business owner i'm a business owner officially i don't i don't know if i told you guys this but i had to open up um a business it's not an llc it's like it's like bigger than that girl i had to open up a business i have a business card that has my business name on it and everything um and it's also i could like pay like all the like the money that I'm making through Twitch, TikTok, YouTube, it all is going to go into like the and merch. It all is going to go into like one separate account so I could kind of like track what I, how much I'm making with all this shit, um, which is freaking cool, dude. I have a business account. I feel so cool. I can't wait to like take my friends out to dinner and like and like pay for it and be like, it's a write off. <laughs> It's a write off. I don't even I don't even know like what that actually essentially means, but I'm going to be like, hey, it's a write off. Hey, it's a tax write off. Is a tax writer. I have an accountant. Um, well, he's not like my accountant, but I worked with an accountant. He's not like fucking actually managing my money on the daily. <laughs> um, but he he helped me open this account and whatever. I had to pay him to do it. So technically he is my accountant. So whatever. He's not on payroll, but you know, I paid him one time. So call, call it what you want. <laughs> call it what you want. But yeah, I have a business now. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I feel like I feel very grown and sexy about it. Yeah. I'm very proud of myself. And, uh, Oh, also, guys, if you were wondering, I did not get nominated for the Streamer Awards. I did not get nominated. <laughs> womp womp. And it was a very slim chance that I was going to get nominated anyway because there was two categories. So it was Hidden Gem and Rising Star. So the Hidden Gem category, you had to have under 200 average viewers to qualify. Um, and it had to be somebody who's like kind of just getting put on the map, you know, whatever. And but but your average viewer count is less than 200. Um, and my viewer count, if you could because you could look up people's like Twitch analytics or whatever. Mine was 280. So I was like, dang it. I don't know if I if I'm like I might be a little bit over. I I'm, might I'm, I'm have capped that a little bit. So I was like, damn it. Um but it's also crazy to me because some of these people have like 20,000 followers on Twitch, but ha be having less than 200 viewers a stream, which I'm like, how did you get all the followers in? I don't know. That's where it just doesn't really make sense. I still don't understand that because I have, I think, 8,000 followers on Twitch and I consistently have over 200 people. What? But I, but my community, we're like this. We're locked in, baby. I, and, and, and I'm not just saying like my community and I have people that that like are my friends. They're just like your community loves you down like they I'm like, nah, we are like this. Like y'all don't get it like that. Like we're locked in like me and y'all we're fucking locked in. Like I don't care. Like I, I do have a really fucking cool community because some of these 
streamers have such toxic communities especially the female streamers too a lot of times it's just like i don't know i'm just like i'm so glad that you know and, and especially especially when i tell men oh i'm a streamer oh do you get a lot of like um do you get a lot of like guys like thirsting for you no bitch i don't actually it's it's the girls and the gays it's the girls and the gays thank you that's like exactly what i wanted from the fucking jump that's exactly what i wanted um and i'm very very glad very glad that it's not like a toxic community um and y'all are the fucking best so for real shout out y'all but i was just like damn like the other people that got nominated some of them had like 2,000 followers and then some of them had like 20,000 followers but their average viewer count was still under 200 so i'm like damn okay maybe i didn't qualify for that one i was like a little bit past that but then the other one was rising star and that award you had to have under a thousand viewers per stream i'm like bro i'm not even close to that i'm a 280 average right so i'm like oh fuck okay so those people are probably gonna have and then those people had like some of them had like a hundred and a hundred thousand followers i'm like man i was like in i'm in this like weird in between where i didn't really qualify for either i'm like man so it was it was a long shot regardless um but it was just one of those things that in my little Delulu head, I got a little excited about, got a little excited about it. Uh, and I was like, oh, my God, how fun will it be to go and, and wear a nice dress and, and go up there and accept my award? It's <laughs> just me fucking daydreaming. But um, yeah, I didn't get it. But thank you guys for all the votes. I really appreciate y'all so much. If you voted, thank you so much. Even if you took, you know, the 10 seconds out of your fucking day to fill that out and vote for me. I really appreciate you. And there's always next year, guys. And we're on the up and up. You already know what it is. You already know the freaking vibes. We're on the up and up. So that's it. And let me do a little promo while I'm here. Hey, if you listen to the podcast and you don't hang out with me on Twitch, you suck. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But seriously, come on down to Twitch, twitch.tv slash vanilla mace. And also, why don't you follow my other YouTube channel while you're here? I do vlogs. I do other gaming videos. If you're not a fan of Twitch, you could at least watch some of the games that I play. It's just Vanilla Mace. Just type Vanilla Mace in on YouTube. Friggin' that's it. But, uh, yeah. As far as, like, the viewership, this is what I get. It's funny because this is what I've been doing the longest is the podcast. But this is what I get the least viewership on. Because <laughs> some people just don't have the capacity to listen to someone ramble for an hour. Which I get. If I'm listening to a podcast, it's either when I'm driving cleaning or like I have to it, it's it, I'm using it as like a form of like body doubling in some sense like I'm gonna literally I'm gonna watch Martin and Hamza's podcast after this and purge my closet like I need to be doing something like I can't just be sitting in my room in silence like listening to a podcast I have to be fucking doing something um so if you're driving right now if you're washing your dishes if you're doing your fucking laundry if you're fucking at work man shout out to you I fucking see you I see you. Shout out to you. And thanks for listening. Um, but let's take some calls for the day. Let's see what y'all are talking about for real. And let me see if I could give you guys any advice and listen to your stories. Vanilla's Villa, how can I help you? Hey, Vanilla. I love the podcast. I've been listening to it for the last couple of weeks while I've been doing work on the computer um, I'm on episode 24 right now, but I just wanted to call and ask you for some advice. I work at a job in the outdoor industry, and I work with only men, and it's really hard for me to stay sane. So what kind of advice do you have for me to stay on like my girly pop mind? You know what I mean? Love you and thank you so much. Okay, that's real. That's real. That's not something that's talked about enough. Women that work in a very male-dominated industry and having to be around men all day freaking long, but still wanting to like remain in their feminine energy and like be doing things that, you know what I mean? After having to be surrounded by fucking masculine ass energy all day. Oh my god, girl, I would literally want to go home and freaking kick my boots off like <laughs> get a fucking pedicure like girl I don't know I always want to be doing like girly shit like um as far as you know I don't know because don't get me wrong you could work in a male dominated industry and, and it could be great it could be great you could be surrounded by people that are not like toxic and like you know what I mean because you could work in an industry where it's you know equal men and women and you know or more women or whatever you could work in an industry of whatever and it could still be a toxic workplace regardless of you know what I mean what who's in the freaking industry but if you are 
just somebody who's just trying to like be like, okay, still stay in my little in my little girly pop energy. I feel like it's just one of those things where as long as it's not a toxic workplace and you're not being, you know, the the men are not making, especially you said it's the outdoor industry. So in my head, I, I, if I think outdoor, I think like John Deere farming. Like that's, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like Bass Pro Shops. So I would imagine that the people that work in an industry like that um, or like construction, I'm thinking outdoor. I don't know. Like what does that even mean, the outdoor industry? What do we really mean by that? But I'm sure it's a lot of men. I could imagine. Um, but as long as they're not making like condescending comments, kind of like insinuating that they're better at their job than you are because you're a woman. Um, because if that was the case, that would drive me fucking nuts. And I don't think I'd be able to do- deal with that. But I just feel like when you're, you know, just do little things for yourself. Do little things for yourself. Little cutesy things. Maybe like this, this would be me. I'd be like, maybe pack a sunny angel in your work bag. And you could just look at him and be like, look at this little guy throughout your day. <laughs> I have like literally the worst. Because that's actually what I would fucking do. That's like quite literally what I would do. Um, freaking, I don't know, like do little things for yourself. And then when you're not at work, make sure that you're doing things that um, make you happy and make you feel girly pop. Maybe buy a cute little, you know, it's just something cutesy and, you know, decorate your space cutesy. So that when you get to come home, you get to come home to a space that feels exactly how you want it to be and is feminine and cutesy if that's what you like and if that's what you're into um but yeah I genuinely don't know if I would be able to work in like a male-dominated field like that uh because it's funny because in the clubs the clientele is like all men for 90 fucking five percent yes there's like women that come in sometimes in like bachelorette parties and stuff but for the most part with the club you are catering to men but the community and the the co-workers are women, you know, except for like some, you know, the bouncers and some of the managers are men usually. Um, and some of the club managers are cooler than others. Like I've had some really awesome club managers that were men and I've had some absolutely fucking horrendous, put, should be put in jail, horrible, horrible managers that were men. Um so, and I've also had some managers that were women that fucking suck too. So it really doesn't, you know, it, it's not me just like dogging on men right now. Cause I've had some women managers that fucking sucked ass as well, um, at multiple different clubs. So it really just depends on like you as a fucking person and how you treat your employees and like, you know, whatever at the end of the day. Um, example, actually this is, this is something that, that pissed me the fuck off too. Speaking of, um, women, uh, managers, I used to work at this club and, uh, all the managers were women and this guy called me over and um, also the bouncers were like a bunch of babbling fucking idiots, which is how it is at most of the clubs. The bouncers like don't actually fucking pay attention. There was really only like one club where the bouncers like actually paid attention to what they were doing. And that was my first club. They were locked the fuck in. They had like earpieces. They were like they were locked in like they they saw shit happening before it would even happen. You know what I mean? They were really good at their job. Sorry, me. So I'm going to adjust my leg right here. Oh, dropping things. And. I'm like, I'm like going so off of the tangent of what this poor girl called in for, <laughs> but I want to tell the story while I'm thinking about it. Um, so this guy calls me over and it was a club where it was not a gentleman's club. It was more of like a booty club. So people would just like throw ones and you would just dance like in front of them and they're just throwing ones. And it was just like madness all over the place. And this guy, he's like, call me over. He looks so fucking annoying and so drunk. And I'm like, oh God, I already was kind of ignoring him, but he, he like had money in his hand. He had like a hundred dollars and like once he was like, just come here, come here. Like, whatever. Okay, fucking. I'll entertain this for, like, two seconds. If he doesn't throw money, I'll I'll walk away. So he starts throwing money. He's being, like, way too grabby. He's being way too fucking grabby. And I'm like, okay, you you know, you're, you're doing a little too much. So I'm like, you know... You're just grabbing hard, like grabbing my butt. I'm like, ah, fuck, fuck is wrong with you? So I'm just like, okay, you're done. And as I'm like going to walk away, he literally, I'm not even kidding. Dude, he legit bites my fucking ass cheek hard, like bit my ass cheek. I'm like, what the fuck is, dude, I literally turned around and I pushed the fuck. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Sorry, my audio cut out. I don't know. So it's probably like a weird cut right here, but we're back. Sorry. Anyway, so, so he bit the fuck out of my butt cheek. I pushed him. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm looking around. I'm like, where's the fucking security? Security's literally just like, 
uh, uh, fucking looking around like fucking stupid. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So I'm like, get, I'm like, tell the security guard. I'm like, can you come over here? I'm like, yo, this dude literally just bit my ass cheek. Like, get him the fuck out of here, right? And usually, like, most clubs would be like, okay, sure, right? And then he's like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him, right? So then he like go. I walk away. He goes over to the guy and he's like. Hey, you know, like, and he was like this pussy. He was like shorter than me. He was like such a fucking pussy. I'm like, how did this dude even get fucking hired, right? Like, if you're a security guard, like, bitch, you need to stand on business. He was such a fucking puss. And then he was just like, hey, did you like bite her? Like, I could see just the way that he was like interacting. And then the guy, the the guy was like, no, this was, he's very much being like, no. And, And then he was like, okay. And then he like daps him up. I'm like, are you fucking for real? I'm like, yo, what the fuck was... I'm like, I told you, like, what is wrong with you? He's like, well, he said he didn't do it. I'm like, you're kidding, right? Like, you're actually fucking kidding. So then, um... I'm like, okay, whatever. So then I drop it, okay? But, but he's mad at me. So the security guard's like mad at me because I'm mad at him. I'm like, man, fuck you. What the fuck? Like, you're fucking sis. So I walk away. So then I don't know if the security guard thought that he was probably going to get in trouble or some shit. So then he goes and he tells my manager, who's a fucking woman, right? And... Then she comes up to me. This is like 20 minutes later. She's like, hey, so what happened? I'm like, what? With I'm like, that fucking guy, he bit my ass and I told the security guard to do something about it and he didn't do anything about it. And she's like, well, can I see? Can I see? And so I'm like, yeah. I mean, he didn't like, he bit me, but it wasn't like, bitch, I wasn't fucking bleeding, but I shouldn't have to be fucking, it shouldn't have to cut the skin for you to believe what the fuck. Like, why would I just make this? Oh my God, it pissed me off so bad. And she's like, okay. She's like, well, we can watch the cameras back. I'm like, okay, let's watch the fucking cameras back then, dude. Like, why, why, why are y'all acting like I'm making this the fuck up? And that's such a common thing at clubs where they think that we're just like, like, for what? What reason do I have to fucking, like, why are we watching the cameras back? Why aren't you just taking my word and getting this fucking drunk loser the fuck out of this club? It's because these, these clubs care more about their damn customers than they do the fucking well-being of their employees they 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 really fucking do they really and it'd be the worst customers too the customers that don't even be spending no fucking money pissing me the fuck off so yeah that that shit irritated me but um at the end of the day queen as long as you're not dealing with some stupid fucking toxic annoying shit like that from men then just be girly just carry little cute girly things with you Just be, you know, just be girly and do it for yourself. It doesn't even have to be like noticeable stuff that they would even know. Just, just be cutesy and girly. Wear cute little socks with freaking flowers on them. Who cares? (laughs) And also stand up for yourself if a guy is trying to be like annoying at your job. Be like, bitch, fuck you. I'll fuck your dad right now. Anyway, (laughs) let's take the next caller. Vanilla's Villa, how can I help you? Hey, Vanilla, I just want to start off by apologizing because I have let you down. I have let you down. Um, I've let myself down. I just caught my boyfriend of four years fucking cheating on me. And this is like the fucking fourth time it's happened. Normally, I am very, how do you say, very like codependent. And I've taken him back. And I don't know, you have really touched me these past few months that I've been following you and watching you and stuff. And um, I know this is so corny and whatever, but like I genuinely feel like watching you has just given me some sort of strength and um, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm fucking packing up. I'm leaving. I'm out of there. I'm, I'm gone. And I will not let you down this time. I will not let you down. I will be strong. And if I'm lonely, I'm going to just put on your, your videos. I'm going to watch your streams over again and, I will make it. And thank you for being such a positive impact on my life. I know it's so weird because I don't know you, but you honestly have helped a lot. Thank you, Queen Vanilla. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Bye. Wow. Dude. That See, this is what I'm talking about. This means so fucking much to me. Y'all don't even understand like how much that shit fucking means to me for fucking real. Like, <sighs> Wow. Hold on, let me make sure I'm, my thing's still recording because I don't know why I cut out. This is the type of shit I'm talking about, dude. It's just like I fucking, the fact that I, you know, that, 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 you're, that you're about to stand on business because you're like, you know what? No, Vanilla needs me to stand on business. Like, that's crazy. Um, But that's, dude, that literally used to be me. That used to be me. I used to be a fucking pushover um, and I was just kind of, you know, let shit slide and just for the sake of like, oh, well, at least I won't be bored and lonely. 
And girl, it really, it gets to a point where you have to like love your own company. That's, that's really what it comes to at the end of the day is that you, you have to love your own company, you know? As long as you like your own company and, and you like being alone, there is nothing scary about being alone. There's nothing scary about being... There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Don't get me wrong. Because yes, you could, you could you know, be happy with being alone, but still be lonely, which is kind of how I've been feeling lately. Um, but I know, like, if I just go hang out with my friends and whatever, then I'll feel fine again. You know what I mean? Because there's other things that can fill that void that doesn't have to be that fucking person that clearly does not have any fucking respect for you. And guess what, babe? If he did it four times and now this is the fifth time, girl, he's going to do it again. Promise you that. So it's just, you know, what do you want? A lifetime of miso. Enough. Chewing the wire. <sighs> a lifetime of like, you know, not being able to trust a person and, you know, just over the fact that like you don't want to be lonely. You know, it's like the codependency. Is the codependency even worth it at that point? You get what I'm saying? So... There, there becomes a point where you have to like break past that and just be like you know what actually being alone is really not that fucking bad <laughs> it's really not that bad and I'm actually scared of people that like jump from relationship to relationship like that and cannot just like be in their own or people that are like oh yeah I can't be with my, by myself because then my thoughts start to like rate and I just can't be with myself I'm like babe you can't run from that forever I fucking hate to break it to you but you really cannot run from that forever you're eventually gonna have to like be okay with like being by yourself a, a little bit and it's hard it's it's obviously fucking e easier said than done it's not something that happens overnight but um you know what I mean you really do have to just like enjoy your own company and you know in times like this when you are like going through it actively and you're like just found out you were cheated on again and that, that fucking hurts you do have to surround yourself with other people that you love and care about and that love and care about you um because I'm not saying like okay don't talk to this person then just like don't fucking leave your house and like be forced to be with yourself like no go out and do shit go do shit that makes you happy um, go, go hang out with your friends, hang out with your family, hang out with people that you like to be around that aren't just them. You know what I mean? So that's really it, you know? And I, and I really hope that y'all stand on business for real because that's the thing. That's the thing. It's just like, it, it's fucking upsetting. It's upsetting that, you know, a lot of people are like this. And I did make a TikTok about this this past week about, um, men of the club and how a lot of them are, you know, are just nasty, sick, crazies and they're cheating on their wives and girlfriends and like you know they'll, they'll literally be showing me pictures of their wives and their girlfriends and you could just tell that their wives or girlfriends think that they're this guy is like the best guy in the world and you're over here like being a fucking dog like um and then so someone commented on my video and was like well you're the one taking the money from them anyway so like what does that make you i'm like bitch it makes me that i'm at my fucking job and then nobody forced them to come here but them fuck like bitch they walked in here willingly and now i'm gonna do what the fuck i do and, and, and run their fucking pockets out of here you're gonna come in here literally shit like that pisses me off like and it was a woman too i'm like bitch you i already know that you got a man that dogs you the fuck out if you're defending other men like this girl you, you're, you're preaching to the fucking like literally well not preaching to the choir because that would make me that means like i'm the one no you're i can't even think of the freaking term that i'm trying to use but you know what i mean fuck that bitch <laughs> fuck her i was like girl shut the fuck up please like he's very pick me very pick me i'm like girl okay he's not gonna pick you he's not gonna pick you because you're like man don't worry i got you i got if nobody's got you i got you girl shut the fuck up <laughs> um oh yeah it was it was very annoying but <sighs> miso you are insane like for real he's Oh my god, he's hiding behind here, biting different wires. Like, why? Why, why, why? Why? Please, just let me... I'm gonna... Guys, one of these days, I'm gonna get a podcast studio, okay? I'm gonna get a podcast studio, and I won't have to worry about little tiny animals running around and biting things, okay? I promise. So I'm sorry for the million miso interrupt so that interruptings that we get throughout the episode, but it's all part of it. Anyway... This is where we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. Um, as, oh, also, thank you for everyone who bought the merch. Um, like, the last minute. I had some last minute uh, random merch left over. And it literally sold out in, like, a minute. Like, a fucking supreme drop. So, thank you, guys. And that's going to be going out um, next week, most likely. I have it all here. I'm just waiting for Dylan to give me the labels. So, that's going to go out soon. And, um, yeah, I appreciate you guys. And I also have something new and exciting coming up. Can't really talk about it too much. Don't know if it's, like, actually locked in. But... Just put a little extra money aside for something that I might have something going on. That's all I'm saying is because you might you might want to get in on this. That's all. <laughs> all right. Um, I love you and I'll see you guys next week. Okay. Bye.